Every eight minutes, there is a violent incident in a UK hospital. I've been physically assaulted, punched, kicked, bitten. The safety of our doctors and nurses is increasingly under threat. It's almost deemed socially acceptable to abuse nurses. You're out of order. You didn't even look at my fucking leg. On Saturday, you threatened one of our doctors with a knife. But at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Birmingham, they think they have the answer. A dedicated team of security officers. Don't call me, sir. It's not a problem. We'll carry you if we have to. I do think people would be surprised if they realised the volume of incidents we deal with. You get out of my face! I'm probably fucking blow you up, you fucking cunts. Don't let the car anywhere in the room straight away. We do get incredibly violent people here that are intent on causing harm, but unfortunately it's the times that we live in. Oh, come on. The fear's always there. People saying there isn't elements of fear in there would be like. OK, guys um, and girls, we've got a uh, young lad in cute fly waiting for the police to transport him off to the children's. It's the start of a new shift for the security guards at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Birmingham. It's been calm for the last couple of hours, so hopefully you should have a pretty easy shift. The large team of security officers protect the hospital 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. They cover a site of over 33 acres and look after over 10,000 NHS staff. Well, guys, positions are on the board. Pete, you're in control. Uh, me and David are going to go on patrol first, on a black patrol. Stay safe. What's the uh, fat food smell? What are we eating? No, what's your fancy? A bit of pizza and some fries. Yeah, it sounds like a plan. But hopes of an easy shift are about to prove presumptuous. Control to Charlie 7. I'll need you in a and &E as soon as possible, please. Yeah, that's all we see. Thank you. We've had a call from staff, uh, an aggressive patient. He's been combated with staff. The patient, called Tony, has decided a bedpan is not for him. And when he's asked to step away from the basin, he turns nasty. Upon approaching the area, he was, uh, he was urinating in the sink and he's throwing chairs around the cubicle. He started shouting and swearing at me, despite me trying to calm him down. So I left the cubicle, called security. Do you want to go in as well? Do you want to go in everywhere? I'm here. Look at that. We've got some screens anywhere. Take a seat in your bed, Sit down for me, OK? Sit down for me. The fear's always there. If you've got a large male who is aggressive and he's trying to throw things and he's trying to cause you harm, people are saying there isn't elements of fear in there would be lie, but obviously that's when your training kicks in. Uh, but it's that, it's that fear that makes sure that you don't get any injuries and you're always switched on. Tony barricades himself in the corner of the cubicle with the hospital bed. The hospital doesn't tolerate any level of violence or abuse. So when Tony spat, the security guards called the police. They're trying to look after And he spat in a member of staff's face, uh, which prompted us to uh, physically intervene, have to restrain them out to the floor until police could come. Good morning. How are you all? You're going to tend to get you back up. Yes. You'll kill me. Yes. OK, that might change the way we play now. I know it will. <laughs> ah, I'm like, oh, lovely. Break it, go on, break it. Go on, break it. Same fault, same fault. Oh! Same fault, same fault. I put your arm back down on the floor, mate. It's hurting. Stop moving. 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 I'm just Thanks. <laughs> um, he's assaulted a member of staff. They're going to have to take him to another hospital then, guys, because he's not to be treated here. We're going to get you up now. We're trying to do this guys. in a dignified manner. Oh! I will call for security pretty much straight away, as soon as I've got that feeling that there's something bad that may happen. Tony continues spitting whilst being wheeled off. What's that all about? What's that all about? So he's fitted with a mask for his journey to the police station. 
we have a zero tolerance policy and there's only so much behaviour that you can put up with, I suppose. That was completely unacceptable and he was scaring other patients in the department and that, that isn't safe. Control Charlie 7. Not sure, but it looks like this male is drinking alcohol. Alcohol is not allowed inside or outside the hospital building. I don't know whether he's booked in or um, whether he's just hanging around, but uh, I've got him on camera at the moment, just going to monitor for a while. The man caught on camera, Dean, is well known to the security team. He's a regular visitor with a history of violence towards the staff. So, so no, nobody's seen you? Just three weeks ago, in one 24-hour period, Dean was responsible for three separate incidents. First, he made verbal threats to a security officer. Then he became aggressive towards members of the public and had to be restrained. Finally, Dean tried to grab a security officer. What are you playing at? Could you behave all night? There's been appalling, all night. And was taken away by the police. Yeah, uh, Charlie Seven, uh, Bravo One's are going to attend that area. Peter sent Zoe, one of five female security officers on the team. I've known her for about three and a half years. She's like the mother of the unit, really. Um, always buying us chocolates. It's becoming more common that you get female security officers now. She's really doing well. It's been noted on CCTV that there's a gentleman up there consuming alcohol. So I'm just going to go and speak to him and see what his purpose is for him being here. As a female, sometimes it does work to your advantage. Uh, it's a good tool to have people do kind of show a bit more respect to females. Hopefully this will work for this situation. Uh, control uh, Bravo 1. Just be advised, Mal has put the can into his left pocket. He's uh, walked out from the doors and he's uh, currently stood by the, uh, the posts. Yeah, I can see him. It's OK. See if he's got any reason to be here. If not, we'll get him to leave. Is that your can of beer? Dean knows he's not allowed to drink alcohol at the hospital. Tonight he's just pushing his luck. You know, if you want to go book in and seek treatment, you don't need to call an ambulance. You can just book straight into a &E. Dean repeatedly comes to the hospital. This is his second visit of the day. He's a nuisance patient. He's booked in numerous times. I think he's been quite abusive, quite aggressive. He refuses to leave. He's always booking in, gets cleared, and then when it's time to, for him to leave, he doesn't want to leave. It's very irritating when you get your regulars coming in and out. Each time they come in, it's about £900 for them to be seen by doctors and nurses. And then they just sit here for about three or four hours, get seen, discharge and then they come back again. It's so frustrating, but there's nothing you can do about it because you've got duty of care. For the moment, Dean's behaving. But with his history, the security team know things could change in a moment. Control to Charlie 7. I'll need you in a and &E as soon as possible, please. Last year, there were over 67,000 assaults on hospital staff across the country. In Birmingham, a team of highly trained security guards is constantly on call for when patients attack. Yeah, restraint in place, restraint in place. The team uses a bank of CCTV cameras. Jeevan's been working in the control room for six years. He's just spotted trouble in the A&E waiting room. A&E room straight away. Don't kick off. A&E waiting room straight away. This white guy is trying to basically kick off with an Asian guy. Uh, I don't know what for, but it looks like his girlfriend or his wife's trying to stop him and hold him back. I've literally just sent everybody that where we've got because these two are going to kick off in a minute. It's a potentially explosive situation because the aggressive man is hurling abuse. The security team arrived just in time. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> the most challenging part of the job, I think, is the restraint. You've got to time them, you've got to coordination with your other colleagues. He's quite a big bloke, three-man restraint. 
uh, one on each arm, one on the legs to stop stop him lashing out. But all he wanted to do was fight. You don't get off me, what do you do? Are you making threats, are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not. Yeah, Listen. I've calmed. You've been out like this till police come, yeah? I've calmed. And then we'll sort out from there, won't we? I've calmed. Within a few minutes, the police arrive. Let me go then. Relax, mate. Let me go. Relax, oh, mate. I'm cool. I'm staying here with right, suspicion of assault. Thank you. I've got to get out of here. No, 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 yeah, please. Stop kicking out. I'm not kicking out. I'm going to straighten my legs. Go straighten your legs. Calm, Calm down. Calm down. Oh, Let go of the cops. Oh, oh, oh. The police decide to strap his legs to take him to the station. How? One on one. You're fucked. We get a lot of aggressive patients being aggressive towards staff and ourselves. Yep. No worries. When someone does make threats against your life, it's not pleasant, but you can't take it personally. It's just part and parcel of the, uh, the job. It's a new day at the hospital. Hi. Security guards Zoe and Steve have been called to an incident on Ward 514. He should be charged, yeah. Yeah, hold on, mate. Good to go. It's another patient called Dean. He's become aggressive because he's been discharged after two weeks of treatment. But he says he's got nowhere to go. Started kicking off. It's part of the policy that we need to get security involved. If you've got very challenging patients and they get really physically or verbally abusive. He's been rude, swearing at staff. And sometimes it just kicks up big time. I was surprised at the amount of abuse that we receive as a department and the medical staff also, nurses and doctors, um, that they receive purely because you come here for a reason, you come here to get medical attention, so these people are here to help you. It's a, it's a place, place of safety. I've been called a, a C-U-N-T. People have called me like four-eyed pricks, things like that, but it comes with the job, I suppose. Bad, mate. In an ideal world, we wouldn't have to be here and wouldn't have to be walking around in you know, protective stab vests, but you know, we do get incredibly violent people here that are intent on causing harm to us, uh, staff, or the members of you know, the public, patients. But uh, unfortunately, it's you know, the, the times that we live in that we do require to be in the hospital you know, with protective stab vests on. I'll, I'll ring you back, wait. I'll ring you back, Mum. Dean's girlfriend Stacy is trying to help him. Before we come into the hospital, he was really ill. Like, it looked like he was on death's doorstep. And he's coming. And today, he knew he was going to get discharged, but he wanted to find out where he was going to live. Do you know what I mean? Because these weren't, they never told him anything. They would have let him out back on the street, said he's going to go back to square one. You've been discharged, you need, you need to leave. You need to put a complaint in about anything. You can go through pals, but... Yeah, but bring your knees up here. What, what are you going to do? Well, if necessary. What are you going to do? I'm a sick patient now, you can't do nothing. Well, you've been discharged, you need to leave. Should we show the way? It's down this way. I'm going to need to get my other suitcase. I heard the nurses on the board saying they think he's had drugs because he's... The colour of his eyes were red. Well, I know for a fact, when you have drugs, no drug in this world will make your eyes go red like that. <laughs> they just contact lenses that glow in the dark. <laughs> the hospital can give Dean some money for the bus. They said they had nowhere for me to stay. They've discharged me, packed all my stuff. Yeah. And that's see, I don't know, I can't get out. I don't know how I'm supposed to get to where I'm supposed to go. I don't know, where are you going? I don't know. There's some paperwork there, um, so we're just looking if there's any, any way of getting any bus fares. The staff had given him options and informed him of which paths to go down to, obviously help himself to get to get sorted, to get back on the right track. Fingers crossed to get him back on track. Thank you anyway. Take care, Thank you. I love my job. I like being at the hospital. I like looking after the patients and the staff. 
John's one of the most experienced members of the security team. An ex-army man, he has a very personal reason to protect staff at the Queen Elizabeth. My partner's a nurse. You've got people coming to the hospital and sadly sometimes they lose it with the, the staff and we've got to protect the staff. John's on patrol with his duty manager, Pete. They hear a man shouting in the clinical decisions unit corridor. Excuse me, sir. He's frightening the staff and other patients. Yes, sir. It's your shit, man. I'm not a sir. When we arrived, he'd got a, a mental health nurse uh, backed up against the wall. Um, despite his best efforts to try and verbally calm him down, um, it wasn't working and we had to step in and restrain him. The elderly patient has been assessed and for his own safety is not allowed to leave the hospital today. Do you want to 22 him? 22, let's go, come on. A nurse has asked the security team to take the man back to his bed. Come on, we'll carry you if we have to. The most challenging part of the job is dealing with confused patients. You can be called anything under the sun. They'll, they'll use any, any sort of language to try and roll you and uh, make you get angry, um, to try and um, force you to become unprofessional. And our job is to remain calm and uh, remain in a professional capacity while we deal with these sort of people. Can you leave my arm? No. no. You're getting too violent, sir. You know you, was smack your fucking... I'm more reluctant to put hands on on the, the Alzheimer or the dementia patient because sadly they don't know what they're doing and a lot of times if you can talk them down fine. Don't do leave me! Do not! Do not! She said. I've spoken with his doctor and mental health nurse and um, they've advised me that they are going to give him some sedation so they've just asked us to uh, remain in the area and just monitor him. If he won't take oral medication, they're going to have to um, give him a, uh, an injection, so we may be required to help. Before you sit go, down, shut up! Don't you talk to me like that! You cheat it! Oh, look at him here, hard oh, man, I. You would be hard on oh, no, knocking it straight through the one brick wall! In some respect, I take the abuse because, you know, they're at an age where they've earned the right to, you know, to be a bit nasty every now and again. So, yeah, I'm, you know, but obviously there is a limit. The patient's um, a lot calmer now. He's actually taking the sedation orally, so we weren't required to intervene, so we're going to stand down. It's Saturday night, and controller Pete Bridge is monitoring the cameras. Pete never uses the word quiet. That would tempt fate. When everyone says the key word, it seems to go mad. So we never say it in the control room. It's sort of like a banned word. Pete's just spotted a familiar face on CCTV. It's a and &E Dean, and he's drinking again. Are you making your way back to the uh, front of house, please? Security officer Zoe is on Dean's case. He's just been assessed by a and &E, as well as the mental health team and there's nothing wrong with him. Dean, I'm not bad person. But this is where we stand at the moment. You have been discharged. I, I informed you that you shouldn't be drinking on site. And at the moment, the, obviously, you've, you've got no need to actually still be here. I've got nowhere to go. Okay. I and I vulnerable. totally understand that. At the hospital, we do have frequent patients that will come in. Uh, we'll see them sometimes on a weekly basis. Sometimes we'll see them more than once a day. You've been discharged medically and mentally you've been discharged. And every time he's discharged, there's always some kind of issue with him not wanting to leave. So then we're called and we have to intervene. We've been no, running no, circles now because what time was it that before we, you rebooked it? It was about 8 o'clock and now we're at like nearly 3 o'clock. And I understand where you're coming from and I understand that you're having a bit of a rough time. But at the moment, you've got no need to still be remaining on site. So there's two ways we can go about it. And I'd like oh, it to be the first way. I don't want it to be the second way, because you're a nice enough lad. Yeah, it's just... And we've got an understanding I'm going on here. I don't want to have to physically remove you. OK. 
Dean finally leaves the hospital site and Zoe and the team stand down. But just a few minutes later, he's back. This time he's on the phone calling himself an ambulance. Who are you on the phone to? Do you want me to speak to them? Yeah. Hiya, are you speaking to one of the security officers at the Queen Elizabeth? Yeah, this gentleman's been booked in twice within the department today. Zoe spots a police officer and asks for backup. Keep calling ambulances. We have told him he needs to leave, but he's just on the phone to the ambulance service at the moment. Terminate the call because obviously I'm a police officer now. Yeah, no worries. Thank you. Bye. OK. Dean has occupied the security team for seven hours this evening and he's also managed to avoid paying for travel home. The police officer kindly drove him. So all in all, a decent outcome. No restraints, no violence, no aggression, no paperwork. Good evening, Kofi Security. Hi, it's Sister Nidhi. Got a very abusive woman at the uh, main section there. Yes, Becky, I'll have a word. Thank you very much. Thanks for love. Cheers, bye. It's 10 p.m at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Birmingham. Control to Charlie 4. Send it. A&E, main waiting for a middle-aged female being very aggressive towards stuff. Can you go and have a word? The aggressive woman says she has a sore foot. Nurses have confiscated her alcohol and she's not happy. John's been sent to keep an eye on her. Will she be getting an x-ray? No, probably not. Probably, it's probably likely to be soft tissue. Yeah. I just drunk, basically. Staff in A&E spend a quarter of their time dealing with alcohol-related incidents. There's a high level of verbal abuse within the A&E department. Um, it's almost deemed socially acceptable to come into an A&E and swear and abuse nurses because some people, unfortunately, deem it that we're there for them and we'll put up with the abuse. The woman with the sore foot wants to see a doctor immediately rather than sit with all the other patients in the waiting room. I'm telling you now, right, they're taking the mic here. What she's saying, that is, that because you're fit to stay in the waiting room... How long for now they told me 10 minutes? I'm going to miss my boss. You just come to bear with them, all right, Bab? I'll try. All right, Bab. All right. Well, I can smell the alcohol on her breath. Spoke to the sister, it's not a major injury, so she's probably got it strapped up and discharged. But her main concern is not missing the bus. After calming the woman down, John heads back to the control room. I love a tea break. Here you go, Alex. Thanks, mate. Cheers. How was our uh, lady downstairs, mate? Oh, yes. Yeah. She's calmed down. I've explained to her the situation. She is aware now that she's going to have to wait a turn. So hopefully she'll... Uh... Not going to mess her bus, then, though? No? You never know. You never know. Hello, Coffee Security. Alex speaking. Hello, Becky. I'll, uh, I'll send our finest down. Bye-bye. Any? Sorry, mate. Not a problem. See you in a bit. All right. John is on his way back to A&E because the woman who says she's hurt her foot is hopping mad again. She's disturbing other patients and the sister in charge has had enough. You don't need security, all right? I do. The security team are a really valued member of the team. Their presence is definitely needed a lot more than it used to be, which is quite sad, really, but they definitely saved me from a few scrapes over the years. I'm Becky, I'm the senior sister of the hospital, Amy, at the moment, OK? You've been verbally abusive to the staff here. And lied to me, though, the nurse lied. She said she'd assess me. No, she didn't. 2115, staff nurse Alex Coley saw you. She did a very brief assessment on you. No, she didn't. She didn't even look at my thoughts. She said, is that alcohol you're drinking? I said, yes. She said she'd dip it away. OK. Then she said she'd be back in a minute. Where is she? Well, it's a minor injury and we did do an assessment. Whilst she was talking to you, she was doing the assessment. Unfortunately, because you've been verbally aggressive, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. That's rubbish. Violence and antisocial behaviour definitely feels like it's on the rise, which is really quite sad. A lot of it is alcohol fueled. I'm going to walk away now, all right, because I've asked you to leave. You've asked me to leave, and we're not even going to examine I'm not, no. All right? Well, I want to see a doctor. OK, no. I'm in charge of the department. No, no I'm not face. No, because you just made me wait, and you deliberately... Yeah. Right. 
At the news that the police are on their way, the woman becomes physically aggressive, leaving Pete and John with no choice but to restrain her. You get out of my face and don't touch my arm. Sit. That's arm up, bro. Sit on the bed. I swear to God. Sit. Don't touch my arm. Don't. Do not. Let my arm. Are you going to sit down now? Let my arm. Are you that going is to the arm up, bro. Are you going to sit down? Yes. Right. Obviously. Turn around. Let my arm you're a cunt, you are. My brother works in security, and I swear to God, Stop. when I Stop. fucking see you, Stop. I'm gonna watch your name. You Stop. twist up an arm that's been broken. You fucking bastard. You're a marked man. My brother is gonna fucking blow you up. You fucking cunt. I've faced quite a bit of verbal and physical abuse um, from patients um, and visitors to the hospital. If you calm down, they'll leave you alone. Take the fucking Claude Van Damme off me. I know exactly what you look like, where you'll be, and I'll fucking come for you. Some are making those very specific death threats towards you, naming what they're going to do, when they're going to do it. I think it can be quite um, disconcerting, but um, after you've been in the job a long time, you realise that the majority of these threats are, are not um, serious. And you, you're out of order, you lied, you said you'd assessed me, you didn't even look at my fucking leg. The police are on their way, but in spite of her injured foot, the abusive woman decides to do a runner. She'll be free to come back anytime she wants because staff confiscated alcohol off her. I think that was the reason she was abusive. She's probably going to buy some more now and she may be back in a couple of hours time, who knows. The lady walks quickly off sight, with no sign of her sore foot slowing her down. At the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, security work isn't all about dealing with antisocial people. Some patients become aggressive when they come round from a general anaesthetic. So we have um, a gentleman in theatres. Yes. Recovery one. Yes. Um, who woke up agitated from surgery. Guys went up there, they passively restrained him to the bed while uh, staff sedated him, which knocked him out, job done. However, yeah. he's then come around 30 minutes later uh, and kicked off again. The patient called Scott is completely unaware of his actions, but is hitting out at staff and putting himself in danger. It's a reaction security guard David has seen many times before. Uh, he's woken a bit confused and agitated state and he has possibly attempted to lash out at staff. Uh, I believe they're now going to look at moving him up to the intensive treatment unit so we're just going to provide an escort while that happens. The security team carefully monitor the situation. And within a few minutes they are called in to assist. Scott's just had a 10-hour operation on his brain. I had a brain tumour, uh, they removed it, and it's just come back now after 11 years. Uh, now, I've had another operation, they've gone up through my nose. I got told by the security, I was fighting with them, pulling all the candles out and the drips. I just can't remember a thing, to be fair. Scott? Stop. Oh, relax for me, please. Need to stay in your bed, please. Oh, no. oh, oh, oh. When we were in there, we did actually have to restrain the patient and ensure that he was in a safe position for the staff to administer further medication for his own well-being. Yeah, it was crazy. If it were for the, I could have injured myself, fell out of bed. Anything could have happened, really. Thanks to the security team, Scott's come through his operation unscathed. In the control room, Pete's in charge. I've got 28 monitors and cameras to see all across the sites, and nothing really gets past me. We've got eyes and ears everywhere. Security control emergency line. Uh, which lady is she? Right, OK, I'll get something up to you straight away. In A&E, a woman is trying to leave, but the nurses are concerned about her mental health and want her to be assessed. David is sent to help. 
I just knew that something wasn't right. And once I sat down and started speaking to her, her speech was very pressured. She wasn't really responding to me. And I just could tell that she was quite psychiatrically unwell. The patient needs to be officially assessed by the mental health team to find out if she has the capacity to make the right decisions about her own welfare. David speaks to the mental health assessment team. The female uh, has just gone out into the waiting area, but uh, we've been told she lacks capacity, which means she's not fit to be out and about on her own. We can then stop her from leaving. With fewer dedicated mental health units, more and more people in need of psychiatric help turn up at ordinary hospitals. We get quite regular, to be quite honest, they lack capacity. Normally after that, they would then probably section them, which obviously gives us more powers as well to stop them. A section means a patient can be kept in hospital for their own safety, whether they agree or not. The lady has been assessed and is found to have psychiatric problems. A few minutes later, she tries to leave again. But one of our officers having words with her, trying to get her to come back in, and the other officers trying to get nursing staff to come out to her. If she tries to leave, we can obviously escort her back in using the restraints if need be. It transpires now she's actually called a taxi to leave site. She said she was going out for the fresh air. So I think she's just trying to pull a fast one really on us. You can take up to hours sometimes with us having to monitor them. If it wasn't for us monitoring the female, she could have easily absconded and maybe caused injury to herself. The security team stands down as a specialist nurse takes over, but the control room is told to monitor the lady for her own safety. In A&E, the team is dealing with a regular nuisance patient, Fred. Right, on Saturday, you threatened one of our doctors with a knife. And you tried to hit one of our staff nurses. So what we're doing now is yellow carding you. If patients are repeatedly troublesome in terms of violence or aggression, then they can be forwarded for a yellow card system. It's effectively a reprimand, which means that they are warned and if they repeat the behaviour, then they can be banned from the hospital. We're not giving you a bed in this hospital because you keep attacking the staff. Fred's been assessed by doctors and psychiatrists who say there is no reason he should be in hospital. If he does uh, misbehave again in the future, they'll withhold treatment uh, for, for a period of a year. The yellow card is Fred's final warning. Despite all of his disruptions, a nurse has paid for Fred's taxi out of her own pocket. The staff can only wait and see if the final warning works. In the control room, Jeevan has just replaced Pete for the night shift and is monitoring the psychiatrically unwell woman. Oh, this female's gone. Control to Alpha One. This female's actually going to uh, front of the house now. Can you try and stop this female? I see one female dressed in a uh, black jacket, blue jeans. Jeevan deploys his team to try to stop the lady leaving. Oh, she, she's legging it. She, she, she's gone. I've got an IC1 female, Section 2 patient, who we've been told by handover to keep an eye on. She's a self-harmer. She's actually run from the uh, a &E department, and she's heading towards the front of the house. And she's apparently run away from her carer and uh, she's heading towards the front of the house now. I've got four officers uh, who are trying to detain her. We were called to an incident where a female who lacked capacity was absconding off site. She's actually sprinted off. She sprinted off into the bushes. I've got no camera views of now. It does cause us a problem sometimes dealing with mental health with patients. Uh, you don't know how they're going to re react to yourself. It could be that the uniform scares them and they want to get away from you because they think you're police or something, you're going to arrest them and, and things, but you're just there to try and preserve their safety. The security team finds the lady hiding in the bushes. We went and removed from the bush. I think she was just very confused and scared of what was going on due to her mental state. She's been on our radar throughout the day and night, obviously since I've come on. We've managed to uh, stop her from escaping and uh, she's back with us until they can uh, figure out what to do next. 
the vulnerable patient is transferred to a secure mental health unit later that night. The Queen Elizabeth Hospital treats a million patients each year. The majority are well behaved, but some are not. The security team has been called to A&E. Fred's back, and despite being on his final warning, he's threatening staff again. Fred, what's happening today, Fred? This time he's crossed the line. He's assaulted a nurse. 43% of A&E staff have been physically assaulted at work. Can I have my cigarettes? Who's got your cigarettes, Fred? You go outside, who's got your cigarettes? Who's got your cigarettes? Who's got your cigarettes? That's sister. All right. Earlier, Fred tried to smoke in the corridor. When staff confiscated his cigarettes, he got violent. The hospital staff and security team decide enough is enough. You were speaking to the other day about behaving when you come to the hospital, weren't you? And if you come into the hospital and you try and punch your staff, they're not going to deal with it, are they? So on this occasion, we've had to call the police, Fred. It's not acceptable. Do you understand that? Yeah? Despite the security guards trying to calm him down, Fred becomes aggressive again and spits in John's face three times. Another member of staff puts a mask over Fred's mouth so he can't do it again. Fred tries to take it off. Ash and John have no choice but to restrain him. Uh, oh, oh, well, you've had your chance, mate. When we took him to ground, I got his arm under my armpit, so... My, all my weight is on my, my body and my elbow, and then I'm just holding his hand here, so there's no weight on his body whatsoever. It's just a re way of restricting his, his arm movement. Because of his violent behaviour, Fred isn't going home in a taxi tonight. This time he's off to the police station and an appearance in court tomorrow morning, facing charges for assault. He came in four times yesterday, 40 minutes each time. That's a delay of half hour, 40 minutes on anybody that's in A&E with a real illness because staff are looking after him. There are many challenges for a security team in a hospital. The team frequently has to deal with mental health cases, which take special care. Okay. Lee's been called to the A&E corridor. <laughs> a young man's behaviour is worrying staff. His body language starting that he was all aggressive. When the males started to advance towards me, and at that point, I was going to put a restraint on. Yeah, restraint in place, restraint in place. You're going to calm yourself down. Staff have removed the man's bed because he's become so agitated. They're worried about his mental health. Yeah, my back in cubicle 12. The male's been put back on his mattress. Where? The patient becomes more aggressive. Don't do to me. Don't do not do to me. Chuck. Chuck. You want to leave, sir? Yeah. Are you allowed to help you? All right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah
Dean isn't happy to see them, and this time, to the relief of the team, leaves quickly and quietly. Hey, Bravo One Control, are you happy to monitor him on camera? And we'll stand down if he heads round towards the front of house. Give us a shout. Yeah, receive. Standing down. Lee has just been recalled to A&E. The aggressive young man with suspected mental health issues has walked out of the hospital after assaulting a nurse. Last year, there were over 45,000 physical assaults on NHS staff from mentally unwell patients. The male patient that I've just been looking after has just um, punched me in the stomach, um, tried to assault the doctor also, um, and then took a second swing at my face. He quite threatened the doctor, so I need to get him arrested. It can be very frustrating for us when there's patients that are quite aggressive, uh, they, you know, they want to hit out at us. Um, it, it's not nice at all, because we, we are here to look after them and help them. Yeah, so Sarah One Control, uh, just to confirm. Lee heads outside A&E to find the patient and stands guard until the police arrive. Leave me alone. Can I have a fight? Yes. Then don't touch me then. Get out the road. To stop the situation escalating, they decide to let him smoke and guide him towards the shelter. Did you want him to come to this? Huh? Police are being called now. What? Because you have aggression in the department. Just monitoring the male at present while he has his cigarette. Nursing staff are inside con contacting West Mid's police because of his continuous bands of aggression within the department. He's being compliant at the moment. So, as I say, we'll just monitor and see how, see how far it goes. What's going on? I've been a bit stupid, I'll be honest. Okay. I ain't gonna lie to you. Yeah. Before you carry on, you just put your hands in this wall, you're back for me, buddy. Be arrested. Well, you're gonna have to be, aren't you? You know, you know the sport. Put your hands behind you, Alan. Just put your hands behind your back. I'm gonna. Just chill. Just chill. Behind your back. Just on suspicion of assault at the minute, okay? You do not have to say anything, but my own defence, if you do not mention my question, something which allows you to rely on in court, anything you do say may be given in evidence, okay? The police have arrived, arrested the male on suspicion of assaulting a member of staff. We're standing down. Our job is done. I've lost count how many times I've been um, verbally abused, physically attacked. But, however, as sad as it sounds, that's, it comes with a job now. As one nuisance patient leaves, another arrives. Dean's back and has checked into A&E for the second time in an hour. Dean is medically and psychiatrically discharged again. His dream of getting a comfy bed for the night hasn't come true. The best he gets is a quick nap in the waiting room. The Queen Elizabeth Hospital is open 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, to anybody that needs their help. But for those who cause trouble, the hospital security team is always watching.